think that most people would recognize that this horse shows a right forelimb lameness. But when evaluated in hand and on the lunge, the horse appeared sound. The head goes down as the left forelimb hits the ground. In addition, I can see that the horse episodically tilts its head, opens the mouth, swishes the tail, and has a rather unsteady head carriage in addition to the head nod. These are features that I think are likely to reflect the pain associated with the right forelimb lameness. Have you ever wondered why your horse was difficult to ride on the bit, took an uneven contact on the rein, or was reluctant to canter on the right rein? Have you ever considered that this might be related to pain? These problems are so often attributed to training problems, but could they be pain induced? Even experienced riders and trainers are often unable to spot low grade lameness, which can have a marked effect on performance. However, dramatic improvements in quality of movement, ease of riding, demeanor, and other aspects of behavior may be seen after removal of pain. Let's look at this pony. The pony is above the bit. Its head position is erratic. The eye shows an intense stare. The pony tilts its head. Its ears are back. The pony shows a low-grade right hind limb lameness. The saddle moves more to the right. There is some opening of the mouth. The rein tension is inconsistent. On the left rein, the pony starts a little better and then spontaneously breaks to canter and will not re-establish trot. The pony is above the bit. The rider is sitting very quietly. With the normal child rider, the pony will not trot. It just canters almost on the spot on both the left and the right reins. I recognized that the tree points of the saddle were too tight. So I changed the saddle and the pony immediately became more relaxed. The pony was less likely to break to canter, but the right hind limb lameless became more obvious on the right rein and low grade left hind limb lameless was detected on the left rein. Let's look at the pony after the lameless has been abolished using nerve blocks. There is a much more consistent rhythm and head carriage, and the pony is no longer above the bit. There's much reduced tilting of the head. There is now symmetrical movement of the hindquarters and the saddle. The pony no longer breaks to canter. There is much less tension, and the rider is able to ride more positively. There is reduced mouth opening. The pony's quality of movement and behavior have been transformed by removal of pain. The pony had suspensory ligament injuries, which were managed surgically. We also changed the saddle, and this enabled the pony to return to full function as a show jumping pony. Sometimes we may not see over lameness, but the horse is reluctant to work, especially in canter. This horse goes above the bit and moves its head up and down. It lacks hind limb impulsion. It has a bilateral hind limb toe drag. The head movement had initially been attributed to naughtiness, and then the owner wondered if it was a classical head shaker. The horse is reluctant to canter on the right rein, puts its head up more, lays the ears back and has an intense stare and the head movement gets worse, both up and down and side to side. When canter is established, the head tossing up and down deteriorates. The rider is in a two-point position, sitting light. If she sits in the saddle in canter, the horse immediately broke to trot. 
canter left was easier to establish, but head tossing was worse. The horse was crooked. There was intermittent exposure of the sclera or the white of the horse's eye. The horse broke spontaneously to trot several times. This is after nerve blocks, infiltration of local anaesthetic solution around the sacroiliac joints. The trot is much more consistent with a marked reduction in head movement. The horse has a much lower head and neck position, so has an increased range of motion of the back and is able to engage the hind limbs better, showing improved hind limb impulsion. It is much easier to both establish and maintain right canter. Head tossing is not eliminated, but it is markedly reduced. And now the rider is able to sit in the saddle in a three-point position. In left canter, there are still some resistances, but these are easily ridden through. The horse is improving progressively over time and looking much happier. This horse had primary lumbosacroiliac joint region pain. Sometimes problems are only manifest in specific movements, with the horse looking superficially normal when working around the periphery of the arena. In working trot, this horse superficially appears sound. However, to me, the rather flashy movement of the forelimbs are not matched by the hind limbs. The horse maintains a regular rhythm and outline with the ears forwards and an engaged expression. But the front of the head is consistently behind a vertical position, so the horse is consistently overbent. The horse could easily perform leg yield to the left and right shoulder in. But asked to move sideways on the left rein, the horse showed huge resistances, putting his head up, swishing the tail, stopping spontaneously, putting his hindquarters in and being unwilling to go forwards. The horse was transiently very overbent. He then went forward a few steps and then again resisted. The head went up, there was exposure of the white of the eye, the horse was crooked and stopped again. After the hind limb gait is improved by nerve blocks, the baseline trot is much improved and the forelimb and hind limb movements are but much better matched. There is increased hind limb impulsion and engagement. There is also increased range of motion of the back. There is a higher head and neck carriage and the horse is less overbent. The gait is more animated. The horse is now able to perform leg yield, moving to the right, away from the rider's left leg aid without resistances. It can also perform a reasonable quality left shoulder in. The horse had hind limb suspensory ligament injuries and also a component of lumbosacroiliac joint region pain. So what we've seen from these examples is that there doesn't need to be obvious lameness to induce pain, which can alter both performance and behavior. Recognizing that behavioral problems can be caused by pain is enormously important. We have developed the ridden horse pain ethogram comprising 24 behaviours, the majority of which are at least 10 times more likely to be seen in a horse with musculoskeletal pain than a non-lame horse. The display of eight or more of these 24 behaviours is highly likely to signify the presence of musculoskeletal pain. If you want to train your eyes to accurately identify subtle signs of pain, go to equitopiacenter.com, sign up for my course, How to Recognize the 24 Behaviors of the Ridden Horse. This course will teach you to correctly and confidently assess the true well-being of your or your client's horses.